Hello! This is going to be a very boring video of me assembling one of these RS-232 to RS-422 serial adapters for AMC motor controllers. I'm going to start with this side because it has the most components on it. Once you have the components on there, then it becomes a little wobbly. So we want the side with the least amount of components to be done last. So we're going to start with uh, this side. Now, it's right side up for you, but it's actually upside down for me, because I'm on this side. <clears throat> and that's just to allow me to get in here and still be able to do stuff, and you guys can watch. So we've got uh, a pair of tweezers to uh, place all the components. got a soldering iron, which could possibly use a smaller tip, but that's what's on there right now. And we've got good old-fashioned uh, tin lead 6040 solder. So, first thing we're going to do is, uh, it's kind of an order of operations to the whole thing, because of the way the, uh, just to be able to get in there. So first thing we're going to do is put U1 in, which is the uh, 422 transceiver. And we will go ahead and grab, I kind of like a cooking show, have all the parts already <laughs> over here. And um, first thing you notice is there's no uh, like dot. Normally you'd have a dot on here. There's a side that's at a different angle than the rest. And that's how they denote pin 1. And you can see the little pin 1 dot is right there. So we need to flip this around. And what we want to do is just kind of tack it in there. You know, we want to get it lined up. The easiest way to do that is kind of heat it up. Line it up, and then there we go. So I get it tacked in, and then I go ahead and flip it this way. So I can hold it, and then we'll go through and... Uh, you can hear me, I'm... I'm got a little soldering iron stand over here and I'm cleaning it the sponge that's on there and then we'll go ahead and uh, solder up all the pins real quick and uh, got that guy on there so that was the 422 transceiver and then um, I guess next we'll do the uh, next hardest one is uh, U2 here Kind of want to do this. This is the five volt regulator. Kind of want to put them on in, a, in this order because it's easier to get to. Like to get to this pad will be really difficult later on when there's a capacitor there. All right. I'm trying to keep this centered for you. Here you go. I'll move it like that. But same thing. Just kind of want to tack the corner in. It doesn't have to be a good joint when you're tacking it. Just to, you just want to hold it there. So you can come in here and actually solder it. There you go. So that's our uh, 5 volt regulator. And then next we'll do all the little passives. So we've got uh, this resistor and cap out here. It's a 113 ohm resistor we'll put in. And then this is a 0.1. That's the termination. Our uh, 422 termination. And then the rest is all bypass caps. And our LED. So we'll go ahead and get the... Let's do the resistor first. And again, we just want to tack the one side down. And do the same with the capacitor here. And C1 is supposed to be a point 0.1. That's what I've got. And you can put it centered a bit better. But you can see what I mean how there's an order of operations. It's really difficult to get in there to solder now. But since I got the parts on this way, it's easier. So you kind of want to do it in this order. And then let 
Let's see what is C2 is supposed to be a point one. It's just harder to get in there now. And then C3 is a 4.7 microfarad capacitor here. And then that's the it's 25 volts. All the caps on here are rated for 25 volts. And then another point one. And last but not least is the LED. Now let's this is a little tricky because it's not got a marking on the top, it's underneath. And that becomes a little issue. As you can see, put it right there. That little tiny green line, and there's a nib that sticks out to one side, a little tiny thing on there. That's pin 1. You can see right here, the pin 1 is that dot. So we need to flip this around this way and make sure that we don't reverse it when we put it down. And then I'm going to pick it up here. And scooch him in. <clears throat> now we're going to flip this around this way. And I'll go this way here like that. And then I'll go ahead and finish soldering the other side of all these guys. If I can get my tip cleaned off here. There we go. side of the LED and then because we just tacked them I like to come back and just give them a little bit of a touch up just to make sure we got enough flux in there make sure that they're all good connections and there we go and then we can verify that we got the LED in right by using our trusty voltmeter here put on continuity check you can hear the beep if you go over to pin 6 so the little dot here is pin 1 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and then the end here is ground and you can see the LED lights up so we know we got the LED in the right way so that's the quick easy check <clears throat> now the hard part is flipping it over well I guess that's not that hard but now we're a little wobbly, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to get parts on. But we'll manage here. So we're going to do the same thing. This is the um, RS-232 chip. And U3. And this one's got a line over here that tells you what side's pin 1. And the little pin 1 dot is right there. And so we want to line that up. Yeah, this is going to be more difficult. Because we're off center. Ah, but I make it look like I'm a professional. <laughs> and not a hobbyist. So, we'll go ahead and tack up. Uh, actually, solder these guys, yeah. Flip that around, get the other side. So, good on that, and then we will go and go and so I can tack down all of the rest of the parts here. So we just got capacitors that are left, and it's pretty easy. The point ones are gonna be closest to the four or the RS232 transceiver and the 4.7s are going to be farther out I'm 
my tweezers are hitting the cell phone. <laughs> oh, okay, got in there a little crooked. Yeah, that's better. And we'll flip it around to the other side here. And I'll go ahead and uh, get these sides. Good. Again, hard to do because she's wobbly. The parts on the back, and then I'll go ahead and touch up these sides since they were they were tacked. So I just get a little bit more solder on them to make sure we got a good joint. And that is all the parts soldered on there. And the last thing to do is put the connectors on. <clears throat> and if you notice, the uh, thickness of the board is just a little bit wider, a little thicker than the spacing between the uh, pins on the solder cups here for the two connectors. But you can take a screwdriver, if you've got one that's got this kind of a profile to it, like that, and if you go and take it and kind of push in there, like, like so, you'll end up splaying those guys out. And that makes it a lot easier to put on. So then, do that to both of them. I've already done it, so. And then, you obviously have to have it on the right way. And then you just kind of squish it in. Make sure it's lined up pretty decently. And then just go ahead and push down on there, and you'll see that it seats pretty decent. Do the same thing for the other one. You can see how it's a tight fit, but it's actually kind of nice because it holds the connector on there. Let's make sure everything's reasonably lined up. Looks good. And then Push it down. So now everybody is lined up. And then we just solder. And you don't have to fill the solder cups up because they're not actually, you know, there's no wires in there. So you just want to get the enough solder on the pad. To make a good connection. Touch that one up. Now we flip her over to the other side and we just finish it up. There you go. That is fully assembled, ready for testing. Good to go. What do we got? 14 minutes? Ah, under 15 minutes each one. Not too bad with explanation. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Slowly but surely, we'll get them all done. Thanks for watching.